Okay, so this is uh, building substates with NGRX selectors. Uh, my name is Brandon Roberts. You can find me on Twitter at Brandon T. Roberts. I tweet out funny gifts. I talk about sports, and I block people sometimes, you know, because that's just how it works. <laughs> I'm a developer and technical writer uh, on the Angular team, and also a maintainer on the NGRX project. So if you're not familiar with what NGRX is, NGRX was founded by Rob Warmald with the purpose of providing uh, open source libraries for Angular with reactivity in mind. Its primary libraries handle state management, of course, and side effects, with additional libraries for handling collections, router integration, and schematics. It's a community-driven project, so if you want to get involved, we always welcome contributions, whether those be issues or uh, docs or code or tests or anything like that. So. so let's get in what we want to talk about today, the selectors, and want to examine the use and the flexibility that selectors provide with you, provide for you in NGRX. So we'll talk about kind of like what they are, the why, and the how with selectors. So you've probably seen this before, but I'm contractually obligated to show you this, this, site, this <laughs> reactive cycle <laughs> every time we talk about NGRX. Because you know, it's a cycle of state changes and uh, reducers and selectors. And selectors represent the, the purple line on the right side of the screen here. So selectors are what binds your global state to your components. So NGRX is used in a lot, of places, a lot of places, and that's pretty cool, you know, if I say so myself. But, you know, I've asked people how they use NGRX and specifically about selectors, and it kind of made me take a step back. The one quote that stuck out to me was, I don't know how they work, I just use them. <laughs> and so I, it made me pause, so I took a step back, and I was like, what? <laughs> okay. So I guess we got some more work to do there. <laughs> so as I mentioned, selectors are responsible for combining and composing data for your components. Whether they be simple or complex just depends on the view model you need to create. But at a, simp a simple explanation is they're just functions with the little caveat mostly. They get passed in global state and return a smaller or composed piece of state based on what your needs are. It's the additional functionality that uh, is provided with NGRX that makes them shine. So let's walk through a simple selector and then we'll go more in depth. So here's just a selector function that, as I mentioned before, is receiving global state and returning the list uh, movies, movie state. I'm referring to state here in the argument as the entire state object to just illustrate how we're picking off properties. So it's pretty straightforward. Calling this function does what you'd expect. You pass in state and you get movie state out. If you compare this to what reducers are, they're pure in that for any given input, the output is always the same. So let's take it a step further and say you have a movie state that has a collection of entities. So what do you do? Do you, you don't provide a selector function that maps each property in the object Instead, you can use a selector function to pick off entities from the result that you already had from the movie state. So what we're doing is combining these functions together uh, to produce movie entities. We call the movie state function first and pass its result to the select movies. So you, what you end up with is a value from the state object. So we start with global state and we end up with entities. So selector functions are predictable, and consistent. So just to drive that home, selectors are, at their simplest level, just retrieving properties from your state. You can also use uh, selectors to combine them together. And this is where the create selector function comes in. And there are a few, there are a couple key things that enhance the selectors, and they deal directly with performance. So the first one is that when you create a selector, the selector is tracking its, its input arguments each time it's called. So why, why, why would you want to do that? Because computations are expensive, especially if you're dealing with 
large data sets. So you don't want to recompute these derivation, state derivations on all state changes. So each time a state change happens, it's tracking the inputs for a selector to see if they've changed or not. So to just illustrate this as a timeline, we can go through and say that state change, no inputs change. It goes to our selector and just returns the previous value. If there are, conversely, if, there are, if the inputs do change, it goes to the selector again, but this time it computes a new value and returns that. There's another added benefit as the selectors are memoized. So again, we talked about, I don't know how they work, so you know, what, is, what does that actually mean? How does that help me with performance? And just to give you a little hint, <laughs> I hope you like state management. <laughs> so I put some more state management in your state management. <laughs> Memoize selectors maintain the state of the last value. So even if your inputs change and it produces the same result, the current value is returned. So going back to selecting multiple sets of data, such as users, books, and the current users, these values could change, but since we're working with shared data, the selector could produce the same result when compared. So it will return the same reference and no changes would need to be triggered. So looking at another example of book views, this allows you to scope down views that are computationally expensive. Here I'm using a dictionary of authors and an array of books to map those two together as opposed to filtering through an author, in, uh, each author in an array, I can just directly pick off the author from the entities. So the second point is selectors, track inputs, and leverage memorization for performance. So in the previous example, we talked about picking off properties to get the movie state and movie entities. So that was a pretty straightforward example. But selectors can be inputs to other selectors. So here I have two examples here. One is just a selector function that I mentioned before that's getting a property ID that's returning an active movie ID. And then with our entity, another project, the NGRX entity, gives you some selectors out of the box. So I'm using the active movie ID and the selectors to select the entities that I want to create or create a new view out of. So combining these selectors together is not much issue at all. A new selector is a, a, third, a new selector is a combination of those two selectors to select the active movie. But this is only done at the local level of the movie state. As I mentioned before, we're operating on global state because we receive global state every time. So once again, selectors allow you to compose queries of data from that shared data that you have in NGRX. So here I'm lifting up the local selectors and I'm composing them to expose them to the global shared state. This selector, if we look at another example, because we're talking about share, a lot of shared data, a lot of complex models that we want to combine together. This selector combines the current user, their books, and favorites into one view. This, all this is done efficiently with tracked inputs and is reusable to build up even more complex views. Selectors are building blocks as I mentioned before. If I needed to use this selector as an, as an input for another piece of data that I need for our UI, then I could do that. So selectors are easily composable to build complex models and live UIs. So that when you're using these selectors in that fashion, you can, they're not just single uses. And you can build them up in a way that makes them more powerful according to what your needs are. And as I mentioned before, we're building these substates out of these selectors. 
But what if you say that you need, you need a little bit more? You need a little bit more power. Selectors are customizable. So underneath each create selector is a create selector factory that comes with a default memorization strategy that I mentioned before, which tracks the quality of the result that you, that's generated when the inputs change. So out of the box, that is what you get with the create selector function. And to just illustrate that, selectors use an equality assertion for checking values. And this supports most use cases, but collections include large sets of data that ch data changes over time. And selectors may only be interested in a small subset of that data, that data that may be relatively fixed. So let's look at these two arrays here, which would have been the result of an array of uh, a collection that was updated as a state change, but it was recomputed and produced a new value. But as you can see, the arrays are still the same. So we can be more efficient with a custom selector. So custom selectors, like I mentioned before, allow you to override the custom or the default strategy for memorization. So if we wanted so to check whether this strategy would go through this array and compute the same result again, you would check that whether it's an instance of an array and check that every property in one array still matches everyone in the second. So using that in our uh, defining an array memoizer function, you can compose the default memoizer with the custom check for the resulting array, still taking advantage of memoization, but using your own custom logic. So you still use the create selector factory custom memoizer, but now you have your own create array selector that's fully customizable to your needs. So selectors allow you to query your store for data, whether that be small sets of data or large sets of data that you need to combine together. They recompute when their inputs change. That way states, your, your application is a, you know, a constantly flowing state change but you don't need to recompute every time. We fully leverize memorization for performance, so that we only need to trigger changes when it's needed. Selectors are fully composable. You can build up these complex models, or these substates as we call them, in your Nginx app. And selectors are extensible. I showed you an example of, more advanced example of creating a custom memorization strategy for an array, but you can customize those according to whichever your requirements are. So just to cap it off, whether you want to slice off a small piece of state for your application, or you want to build some complex model that you're spreading around everywhere, <laughs> selectors are fully capable of handling either one of those scenarios. So let's talk about uh, one last thing. And if, you're, if you've been NGRX before, or even if you haven't, you should, this should be exciting, or should be exciting for you, because I know it has been for us. And that's the upcoming version of NGRX version eight. So let's talk about where NGRX is today. Today, NGRX is still about explicitness and type safety. And we do this using action classes and enums. And this works, works to satisfy the explicitness. But you know, people say this is a lot of, that seems to be kind of heavy to what, what we want to do. And because open source collaboration is awesome, we came up with a less verbose way to create actions. So now we have introduced action creators in NGRX. Now, these action creators are in version seven, and we simplified them even more for the upcoming version eight. We still retain the same type safety and explicitness with less code. So instead of creating new instances for action classes, we can use the action creators when we're dispatching actions and still have that type safety for your action metadata. Now here's another one 
because we've talked about this one before many times. Because you, if you were here last year, you maybe heard me scream boilerplate <laughs> in the talk last year. But along with action creators, we took a look at some different ergonomics for reducers. Today, you can use a reducer function with a switch statement and an action union. And this is still a completely valid way to do a reducer and be explicit about it. But thanks to Nicholas Jameson and his TS Action Library and Alex Akrushko for building out this feature, we now have a helper function to generate a reducer that operates in the same way. You can generate multiple actions, know you more union types are required, and you still have all the same guarantees that you have currently today with NGRX. Another feature that's coming is NGRX data. NGRX data was developed by John Papa and War Bell. In version 8, it will be an official NGRX package with minimal setup, managing entity collections, batteries included NGRX, but it's still NGRX under the hood. And for new, I want to also say that we have some new people coming onto the team. Now, you may have seen them on Twitter before or if you follow the NGRX repo. We have Alex Akrushko, who's a software engineer at Google working on Firebase and is a maintainer for NGRX inside Google and has written many high-quality articles about NGRX and authored many of the features that I mentioned. There's also Wes Grimes, who is a software engineer in the insurance industry specializing in enterprise web apps. So in his spare time, he enjoys mentoring new developers, tracking weather, and contributing to open source projects like NGRX. So if you want to follow, the, follow Wes on Twitter, you'll find pictures of food, sunsets, and tidbits about Angular. Those, those sound like pretty good things to me. <laughs> Lastly, we mentioned before that NGRX is about community. So there's a lot of work that goes into each release, and we, that would not be possible without the community of contributors. So I've listed some of the names of the contributors here, and this is not an exhaustive list, but this is, these people come from a lot of diverse backgrounds, but all have contributed in a meaningful way, whether it be docs, code, or testing. So if you want to get involved with our great community of contributors and continue this open source project, we welcome you. Thank you for having me. If you want to read more about the docs on NGRX, you can go to ngrx.io. And then once again, you can follow me on Twitter if you want to have some fun. Thank you. Yeah.